Well, let's see about Steve Arts 89. Well, I love an anthology show, and I just discovered um, Tales of the Walking Dead just recently. I just watched it um, the other night. But um, it's interesting because I, I started, of course, watching The Walking Dead because it's a zombie TV series. And I did sort of like it at first, but I got really tired of it really quick. The whole idea that um, the disease, we're already infected, and when we die, we turn into zombies. There's no hope, there's no way out, there's no cure, there's no resolution. It's just a bleak, depressing thing, and I just got sick. Once Stephen Young was killed, I just stopped watching. Um, and I haven't gone back. I have. Every, I own every series, of course, just in case. I want to watch it, but um, I still haven't watched it. I might go back. Fear the Walking Dead seemed a little bit more interesting because um, there was this big gap, and, of course, the thing that annoyed me the most about the first season was they sort of jumped over the whole collapse of humanity, and now it was sort of the aftermath, and it's a cheaper way to do it, obviously. And Fear the Walking Dead seemed to be more about um, the collapse, which seemed more interesting, but I still didn't really enjoy the first season of that either. But Tales of the Walking Dead um, was interesting because I thought, what is this? And it seems to be an anthology show of different stories, and I thought, well, I'll watch that. And I loved the first two episodes because I thought, okay, I get it. They're doing the stories they couldn't tell on the show. The funny, the interesting, the weird little stories that just didn't fit into the overall show and the theme and the, the story for the season sort of thing, um, ideas they obviously came up with that they wanted to do, but like I said, they didn't fit into the show because they'd have ideas about, you know, what would happen if you were in this situation in, in sort of a you know, zombie apocalypse. And, you know, I thought this is going to be great. Uh, the first episode is called Evie and Joe, and it stars um, Michael Strahan and some female actress, who I don't know. And he's basically in a bunker, he's safe. But um, he's been a um, prepper who hasn't been, apparently wasn't really living much before that. He's got a dog. The dog eventually, um, he's getting older, but he eventually got killed by some zombies when they, because he sort of has to keep taking the dog out to go to the toilet and the dog gets killed, he's alone. And eventually he decides to go out on his own and find this woman that he was corresponding with as another prepper before everything collapsed. So he's out on the road and he encounters this woman, um who, at first I thought she was going to be the one he was looking for, um, but yeah, she ends up um, kidnapping him and taking her back to um, her house, basically, just because she's not sure if, you know, if he's actually dangered her. Um, eventually, they end up going together, because they're looking for people in the same area, only about 10 kilometres apart. So they end up riding together, and they get to know each other, and they sort of both start to warm up to each other, and it's kind of all good, until someone steals their bike, but they're near the place, they end up walking there, and he gets chased by zombies and finds the woman he's looking for, and she finds that the um, ex-boyfriend she was looking for isn't there anymore. So then she comes looking for him. He's down in the bunker with this woman, and she seems nice at first, but she has some issues, and she feeds him some um, drugged cake and ties him up and starts to threaten him because she thinks he's plotting with people to destroy her, you know, the usual sort of paranoid del delusions. And then somehow um, the other girl gets in and rescues him, and they go off together, um, just walking down this railway, just with nothing but this land that the person who stole their bike left. And it's just re it's a really light, funny little um, episode that wasn't that dark, grim, bleak, um, you know, cynical sort of um, dystopian sort of view. It was more sort of hopeful and... Just I thought, this is good. These are the stories they could tell on that show that people do still want to see, and this is a way of doing it. Um, so the next episode was called Blair and Gina, which is two feuding office employees, and they get stuck in a Groundhog Day where they keep dying when a truck blows up after the zombies start attacking. And each time you find um, they find different ways, and eventually, because the ones that the stuck-up boss that she ha the receptionist hates, hates, and eventually... They both grow and work out what to do and what, and they end up both actually getting past the time loop and surviving. And it's just a really fun episode seeing just this ridiculous woman, this boss who's just just an embarrassment and cringe, and then this just long-suffering worker just to see them go through this thing over and over again and and change and have it change how they look at things and how honest they are with each other and how they talk and how they become friends over the time. Um, they go through the situation like 15, 20 times or something, or 18 or something, I think they mentioned times. Um, and each time this, this truck that um, is nearby, um, it's a fuel tank, it ends up blowing up, and, and eventually, like I said, they escape. And um, it's a nice, cute little story. But then, unfortunately, we got to the third story. 
Um, the first story is, um, I think it's called Alpha. My computer is not opening at the moment, so I can see what the names of the episodes are. But it's about um, a woman on a, um, a um, like a ferry boat. Um, no, the episode's called D, but the character's name is Alpha. I think she features in an episode later on or show the show later on because some of them are original characters and some of them are like the backstories for ones that already exist. And, um, yeah, it's just... It could have been a really interesting story. What would life be like on a little place like that, like a, a steamboat or something? But it's just really... Um, paranoid and this woman basically is plotting and she resents this woman giving her daughter hopes so she kills everyone and it's just bleak and depressing and horrible and the next episode um um amy and dr everett um this one's kind of interesting where there is a scientist who is studying the walking dead because one of the scientists that he found um after it all and escaped and sort of hid with um and continued on their work with ended up getting killed and end up he ended up studying him and he comes becomes obsessed with him and it's like he's validating his life by making him some someone or something to study. Um, and um, the next one, Davon. Oh, this is there's a guy who basically someone in this sort of cultish town is trying to is has killed some kids and they're trying to blame this guy who's been hit in the head and has amnesia and he's handcuffed to a zombie and the zombie's one of those people and they're gonna kill him and then eventually reveals there's another kid and they eventually work out that he actually didn't kill them. There was actually other people in the town who were working together to, to kill people and that. And it's it's kind of interesting, um, um, the paranoia and, and the way that um, the, the little cult works in the town and everything. But um, it's still kind of dark. It's not that much fun. Um, La Donna, because sadly it's only six episodes. Um, La Donna is a really good one. It's basically this this guy, Eric and in in day I think her name is. Um, I can't Sorry, my camera keeps cutting out, which is probably a good thing because I just can't pronounce that woman's name. Um, but yeah, these two people, um, they're apparently on the road with a woman who was going to see this 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 lady, um, LaDonna, who apparently is some sort of um, psychic or has visions. And um, the other person gets killed on the road, but they continue on. They get there and they talk to this lady and she doesn't sort of know why they're there. She doesn't really welcome them. She doesn't really want to help them. Um, they want to stay there. Obviously, this house seems very safe. It's got big sort of... Um, stone walls and a big um, metal gate and it's very old and she's obviously sheltered there for a long time but um, she does allow them to have dinner there but they, she says they can't stay and she doesn't give any reasons and I'm like well why can't those people stay I, and of course the boyfriend gets a bit aggressive he's like you know okay, I have to ask why. why why can't we stay like how how would it hurt you why wouldn't you want to help us why would you you know want to basically send us out to a death sentence you know it's cold there's, there's nowhere else to go and she just asks them to leave and um, he gets angry and he grabs her for a second and then she has some sort of heart attack or something and she falls, she hits her head on the table and she dies. So then they just decide to stay in the house. Um, it's mostly the um, the guy's decision, the decision. The girl wants to leave because she is kind of haunted by um, LaDonna. Just, just the idea of staying there, that's her house, and just the guilt that she feels over her being killed. But um, the boyfriend isn't really feeling any of that. He's being practical and like, no, we need to survive. This is a good place. We can stay here and be safe. So they do stay, but um, she then becomes literally haunted by LaDonna. Her, her spirit is basically just all around. She starts to hear things when she's um, praying. She hears someone, you know, her saying, it's still my house. And um, she starts hallucinating and getting afraid. And um, the parrot is, is talking back to them and that and the, the boyfriend ends up killing the parrot and it just becomes messed up and more messed up and eventually she starts to manifest m more solid um, and actually starts affecting them and eventually you know they they reach their you know um, demise and it's a fun episode it's 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 you know like paranormal it's it's um, ghosts and um, psychics and visions and it was really good. I enjoyed it. And it was a nice end to the show because the show was a little disappointing because, um, like I said, they only did six episodes and the first two episodes are great where it really felt like stories they couldn't do on The Walking Dead that were different and more fun because I really find the show bleak and dreary and just dragging out and I, I can't imagine watching the rest of it. I'm going to try to just so I, just to see what happens just so I can say I watched it and can talk about it intelligently knowing what actually happens. Um... But um, this last episode at least was some fun, and I thought, well, 
So out of six episodes, we had three good episodes that were shows they couldn't have done on the show, and three that felt like they just could have been on the show and didn't really achieve much. They're apparently doing another season of the show called um, Tales of the Walking Dead Universe, or more Tales from the Walking Dead Universe. So this was done in 2022, I think, or 2023, I think it came out. So I don't know why they haven't gone straight into it. I guess with all the... Um, you know, the strikes and everything, they're a bit behind, but it looks like we're going to get a second season. Hopefully it's longer, and hopefully they focus more on tales that they couldn't tell on the show and more tonally different episodes rather than just doing another Walking Dead show but single stories, I don't know, instead of, like, you know, one ongoing story. But um, I'm going to go for free to share, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think or thought of the, you know, very short series, um, Tales of the Walking Dead, and... Let's just hope, you know, the next season is, is you know, worth it. Because I'm kind of excited, but I'm kind of half excited and half cautious.